Hey, I'm Charlie from Sunhouse here with Paul Nakauchi. How are you doing today? Good, good. Brilliant. All right, let's start, I guess, at the beginning. We just spoke before we started this. That you've been sort of performing for a long while. How did you sort <laughs> of get into that? How did I get into it? Well, I, I studied um, music in college. Mm -hmm. I was a voice major, and uh, I was uh, studying opera, actually. And then I just started auditioning for musical theater. Mm -hmm. And my first job was uh, doing The King and I with uh, Yul Brynner way back when, wow. when he was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was my first job right out of college. And um, then I just started doing, you know, musicals. And you now I, I moved to New York and uh, worked uh, in regional theater there as well as I worked on Broadway, a couple of shows on Broadway. And then I actually returned to Broadway last year doing yet another production of The King and I with uh, Ken Watadambe. Mm -hmm. So I was there for a year and a half. Good. So I've had like a long history of, you know, theater stuff. And right now I'm in Minneapolis at the Guthrie Theater. I'm doing a production of uh, Sunday in the Park with George. Wow. So uh, a lot of the guys that I've spoken to, they've sort of made it clear that being an actor and being sort of a voiceover artist are not quite as similar as you'd think. And obviously, Overwatch isn't your first VO job. It's not even your first voiceover job for, for Blizzard. So how did you go from having this amazing pedigree in theater work to getting into voice acting? Well, you know, it was kind of a fluke for me because my commercial agent in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. um, that handles me, you know, that sends me out for commercials, and um, they have a big voiceover department. And actually, there's quite a few well-known voices like... Uh, uh, Fred uh, Tadascore was is one of their clients. Um, he does a lot of voiceover work. Uh, actually, so we did a, we did a little voiceover a job together, um, and we were on a BlizzCon panel last year together. <clears throat> but they just uh, they knew that I um, you know had a theater background, so they just called me and said, you know, you want to just come in and you know try doing this voiceover job, you know, because it was for an Asian voice and said, sure. And that's kind of how I got into it. Um, then I started actually booking things. Um, one of my first uh, big voiceover jobs was I, I did a, a Marvel animated um, um, movie called um, Doctor Strange. They did a, a animated version of it before they did the live action versions. Yeah. And um, I played Wong in that. And um, and so I, I just started just doing voiceover stuff, and then the you know video games started taking off, and um, I started working on um, video games. Um, and you know they've they've actually uh, changed so much, you know, in the last decades. Um, the the animation is so you know amazing, and now there's oh, yeah. motion sensor. And, you know, so uh, it's amazing what, what they've turned into. And um, the Overwatch series is was was just another one of those things where, you know, I got hired to do it, and then I had no idea that it would turn into to, um, this big thing that it is now. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah. it's great that everybody enjoy, enjoys playing it, you know. Yeah, you sort of mentioned people that enjoy playing it almost in a third person. Now, have you? Are you much of a gamer? Have you ever played the game? Well, you know, and that's the funny thing is because I'm really not a gamer. I've, I've, you know, watched it and I've maybe played it once, but that's just about the extent of it. I'm, I'm not an avid gamer. Um, it's just one of those technologies that uh, we obviously, when I was a kid, it didn't exist. Yeah, and so I think it's something that you start doing it as a kid and then it, it mm -hmm. grows this 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 interest and so for me as an adult it, it I, I just don't really have that interest you know that you you get when you're like young but um, they, they're they're fascinating you know and I, i'm it's uh fascinating to me the uh the amount of people that are um involved in it mm. like legions of fans <laughs> well, ha have you ever been because obviously your your character's voice, Hanzo, is like universally recognized now. To it's weird to say it, but it, tens of millions of people. But obviously, it is a voice. Have you ever been sort of recognized or contacted? As, oh, hey, you're that guy. 
Well, you know, it's interesting because um, there have been a few people that have come to the show and sort of like recognized my voice. Mm -hmm. you know? But I think, you know, it's, it's different where as, as people don't necessarily attach the voice with a person, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'm not necessarily speaking in my normal voice when I do those videos. So, you know, um, if I do that voice, you know, then I think more people will recognize me. But my no my more normal speaking voice, you know, it's not, you know, it's not <laughs> as that is. So, yeah. What What was the sorry the last part of your answer? You said that the Hanzo voice was much more something. Well, the, the Hanzo voice is it's just more dramatic. I, you know, I, I use a more a lower register of my voice. Um, you know, because in my normal speaking voice, I don't necessarily just speak all the way, you know, speak mm. down here. I mean, I'm lucky that I, I have a register that I can use. But then I have my normal register that I speak up here. So, you know, it, you know, it's... Uh, yeah. So when, not just specific to Hansa, I guess to all of your voiceover work, where does it come from? So did you sort of get in the booth and they were like, okay, so we, we want your normal register, but a bit lower? Or did you kind of do that yourself? Um. You know, I obviously when you do you, when you're doing the scripts, you know, and they require a whole you know range of emotion. Mm -hmm. uh, your normal voice, you know, goes all over the place. You yeah, know? and so um, there would be times where they go, "Okay, your register's getting a little bit too high here. You need to kind of like put it more down into my more Hanzo range." You know. <laughs> It's like, okay, you know, so they give you those little adjustments. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, finding the voice, um, it's it's interesting with voiceover stuff. You know, you don't get the material until the day you go into the booth. Yeah, You really, are, you're, you're handed it, and then you just go, okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, that's that's where the skill comes in, is because, you know, you have to create this whole world and this whole voice and uh, and you have to create the drama of the situations really like right on the spot you know without really seeing any of the animation either that the animated um little eight minute short that they did yeah when, when i recorded that um I, I it was i was just in the booth by myself and i had no idea of any of the animation that they they uh, they did afterwards and that was all put in afterwards because, you know, they record the voice first. Brilliant. So, um, yeah. So, you know, it's amazing to me how it actually turned out because it's like, you know, that all of that was, was in it before they even animated it. Yeah. So, but it, that's where, it, you know, it's just, it's imagination. It's all in your imagination. In the voice that... <laughs> It really is. You have to have a very vivid imagination, right. you know, and to see all that in your mind, you know, because wow. they'll they'll ask you questions like, okay, you know, this guy's coming up behind you, and you know, he's going to stab you, and so we want a <laughs> reaction sound, and then we want you to fall, and then you want we want you to you're falling twenty stories, and then you're going to fall, and you, that's when you're going to die. <laughs> okay, okay, go, you know, <laughs> yeah. So so. Go on, sorry. No, I mean that's that's what it is, you know. It's, so just uh, to keep in with your voiceover step for a second, you are one of the main, I guess, mouthpieces that I've seen, especially for the performance matters movement. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Performance matters. Um, oh, in terms, uh, I, you're talking about the the uh, the striking, sag yeah. Sag <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, I mean, not to get into too too much of it because you know I, I I do work for these companies that you know there there is a bit of a conflict, you know. But just in general terms, um, um, voiceover actors are just paid per performance, mm -hmm. you know. They, they don't get residuals. Um, so all these games that go out, you know, in, in other aspects of the industry, <clears throat> um, uh, like on-camera work, 
if you shot an on-camera scene for a television show, yeah. um, any time that that played afterwards, you know, you get compensated for it, and there's a there's a fee structure for it, the compensation. Right. Whereas, you know, when you work on video games, you basically just get paid for, you know, your session, and then that's it. Well, so all of the times that people enjoy your work in all the millions and people that have played the game and hear your voice every single time they play, you don't receive any sort of um, compensation for any of that. So what what SAG is trying to do is trying to you know bring the uh, compensation level up into a, a fair you know compensation which. At some point, you know, you would get some kind of um, remuneration for for that, and that's what the the whole um, struggle is for. Brilliant! Thank you. Yeah.